Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a tutorial talking about the tornado visual effects animation I have made previously. As always, I'm going to use the preset I built for my own. You can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we're in Blender, let's go to the nodding, add a plane, geometry node trees, set curve linear, and to better visualize that, let's add a bevel curve. So we have thickness to our curve line. I'm going to disable this center and step, make it standing on the axis. So this is what we're getting. Let's increase the resolution so that it's more roundish. Okay. Let's take a set shade smooth, although it, it probably does not have much effects if your mesh is running enough. Let's add a set material and we need a material. So there are essentially two ways to make the animation. One is you do everything within shader, or you do that in shader nodes. Whichever way you like is possible. It's, but uh, each way has its own pros and cons. If you're doing that in shader nodes, then you need to export this UV and you can name that whatever you want. For example, I just named it as UV so that you can retrieve your UV data within shader nodes. And here, let's get a, a noise texture. And you can use the factor into the shader. So let's go to material preview mode. So this is what we're getting. There is not enough contrast, everything is grayish, so you have to do this a little bit manually using the float curve. So let's crush this value a little bit. Okay. So let's make it kind of darkish and uh, make it like this. So now this is a kind of very ugly looking patch. We're going to do several steps. So one is back to rotate. and switch that to Ula so that we have better control. I'm going to rotate that on Z. Now it may not be very obvious because it still looks like a very patchy thing, but it becomes very obvious if you multiply the value. So we need a two vector mass. One is for multiply, another is for offset. So we need to multiply one one so that we recover the UV value coordinate. And then you increase that on Y axis. And then you can see how this entire effect has been changed. And you can change this scale. You can also change the details. You can change so many different things. The scale also means the frequency. So it's just uh, depending on how you play around with that. And the final add is to actually animate this value. So now you get this effect very nicely. Here you may want to ask that in Shader, we do have a node which is called a mapping node, which is not a present within geometry nodes. And if you take the vector into the place, basically we have ro location, rotation, scale, replace all these kind of three functions. But if you just uh, try to scale this, this is actually a global scale. So which means if you try to rotate this entire thing, the orientation is always still stays up and down instead of being rotated uh, in a tilting way using this vector rotate. This is just a kind of order of operation. If you change the, if you make this vector rotate at the last operation, you will have the same issue. So this is kind of idea. Okay, before we actually move on in shader, I would like to discuss a little bit about uh, this cube. Right now, this is just a kind of cylinder, which is very boring. But uh, what you can do is to take a set radius, set curve radius, and let's use a curve parameter node. So curve parameter is basically going the start to the end of a curve as zero to one, which means this can be directly used for a float curve because the float curve by default is working for zero to one. So we just remap that a little bit, then narrowing or lowering, lowering down in the middle part, then we have this kind of shape. You can also take a map range so that you map the zero to one into something else. For example, expand the middle part or other things. You can also give a more kind of global change using the radius we have. 
So however you change that, this is kind of idea. And uh, again, you can play around with these animations and then you get this kind of results. Then let's move on in shader. First, I'm going to add uh, some color into this noise. So let's take a mix RGB. You can do however you want. For example, you use a color ramp or whatever. But I just want to keep that as simple. So let's just uh, take a overlay or you can even use multiply, I guess. So you get these kind of results. Let's just uh, take a balloon. So instead of use the base color, let's go with the emission and turn down and finally improve, increase the value. So now the, the good part of this kind of noise is you have a color on the edge while you have the center part being white. So this is making everything very interesting when you're having the balloon effects or other things. Another thing is the alpha, because maybe you do not want this is kind of black background. So you can, because in shader we do not have float compare. So you have to use the math nodes and take a greater than. You can use the original factor or you can use this remapped factor. It does not really matter. So that's greater than zero. Then it will kill all the kind of black parts within this shader. So goes to option. Let's change that to alpha clip. And probably in shadow mode, you also have the alpha clip. So this is kind of results. You play with the animation, you get this kind of idea. And you can also change the threshold a little bit. Um, let's just decrease it. So you can change how much edge is being left within this shader. Okay, let's turn this down a little bit. Okay. So this is kind of the result. Here, I want you to know the disadvantage of using the shader method. The biggest uh, disadvantage is that you cannot really solidify that. For example, you think whatever we're creating here is kind of a flat. So you want more thickness. So you add a jump uh, solidify modifier and uh, this is the result you get. It does not really help anywhere because you can see through the middle part. You can see through the thickness. So it's still flat and it just creates a duplicate of two pieces. Does not really help anything. Very ugly. So this is the bad part of this method. The biggest, the, the worst part of this method. But other than that, I think this is a very good method. The issue is that if you are doing this in geometry nodes, you can solidify that. Uh, you just do almost everything the same with all these kind of vector rotates, vector math, noise texture, and so on. And you output this in the group output. We will discuss that later. But I want you to know that in order to really create this kind of alpha, you have to use the deleted geometry. And considering the deleted geometry, you need to have the geometry at the first place which means you have to increase all this kind of count resolution, subdivide that for many, many times until you can get a nice resolution on this kind of edges. Because not this kind of edges can get unlimited amount of details if you just try to play with, with all these kind of parameters. So you do not need a geometry. Like uh, this is a low poly mesh, actually, super low poly mesh, and it works perfectly fine in shader. But if you're trying to delete the geometry, that then it becomes a completely different story. So next, let's talk about uh, making the variation because this is just a single unit. I believe in the actual case, you definitely need more than that. So you can expose several settings in the group input so that when you are trying to duplicate the object, then you can change the setting, for example, change the height, change the radius. You can also change the color. But how can you actually change the color? There are essentially two ways. One is for the object info node that you have all this kind of location, color, or random. Okay, You can actually take a different uh, data. For example, random is different for each object. It outputs 0 to 1. So even if a different object is sharing the same material, but they can output a different value, in this case, for example, just to take a color ramp and let's take this render. So let's take one as the red, the other one as a constant pink or purple, and then you take this color. 
So note that these two objects is sharing the same material, but if you try to play around with this color ramp, then you can see one becomes purple, the other becomes red, and you can definitely add more options. Another thing is there is no random value node in shader as in the geometry nodes. So the common way that the people create randomness is use the white noise. So you can take the random. You can also take that to 40 so that you have an additional C. And this value is from zero to one. So you can take any kind of map range uh, for this kind of greater than threshold, scale, details, float curve, or whatever things that you want to actually play around. For example, the rate of this adding animation. These are all the different ways that you can play around. And uh, also a thing is that if you want to really determine the color, then you can use this object color instead of using the render. Because maybe you want to really design the different color of different pieces and you do not want to use the random value because you change the random value, everything can be changed so easily. Then you do not want to play with all this kind of lock for a good color. You want to manually get a result. Then you can use this object info and the object color. So the way it works is basically you go to the object panel and in the viewport display, you just change the color. So one becomes red, the other becomes blue, and then there is one becomes purple. So you can play around with these kind of different options. So as we are finishing the shader, let's just talk about uh, how to do this in geometry. Actually, it's almost uh, exactly the same process. So instead of using the shaders, we are going to delete the geometry. So I need, still need the three nodes, vector rotate, vector mass, another vector mass. So one becomes multiply, multiply one, one, one. So still use the same UV and we need a noise texture. We no longer need this UV outputs. Instead, I need a, this is a factor output. And we also need to plug this factor into the selection. So here, let's pick a float compare. So perhaps I'm going to try to use the greater than. And you can see this is a very huge uh, jagginess. So let's delete the other two units for the moment. So that's why we need to actually increase the count. Maybe increase that to 100. Also another to be 300. Uh, maybe not enough, so 200. So this is kind of idea and try to multiply that. Uh, make the threshold, rotate it. and you can animate it. The good part is I have a preset, so we can combine XYZ, and I have presets of time info node. So instead of using a driver, you can drive the X value, but I think it's driving a negative value. So it's negative 25, and you try to play this animation, and it's doing well. The good part is there are several things. One is you can use the smooth modifier, so you can actually try to play around with smooth modifier to create more kind of organic looking. Another more important, uh, another more important thing is that you can just use the solidify modifier to create a kind of thickness. You can also subdivide after this thickness. So it depends on how you need it. So within shader, uh, previously we output the factor. So let's just name as a C so that we can get a C value. Here, let's plug this color into the emission. And we can material preview this value. Uh, one thing I want you to know that we are eliminating all this kind of white parts, which is greater than 0.5. We can also reverse this, maybe uh, eliminate 0.5. It may also be good if we remap this functionality so that we remap from 0 0.5 to 1 so that we have this kind of edge. So now we get everything being done, you can increase the 
counts strands and let's add a color overlay red color or you can use the object color as mentioned previously so you get some kind of idea you can manipulate you can try to play around with all these kind of values uh, until you get something you like but exactly almost exactly the same process and you know the advantage and disadvantage of that i'm not sure if we can actually fix this kind of edge thing um there perhaps are ways to do that but i i'm not very interested in to deal with it so you get a kind of idea and you just play this animation you finish a single unit of the tornado okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'll probably see you next time bye bye